and of knowledge and of holy hope. In me is all grace of the way and of the truth. In me is all hope of life filled with my fruits. For my spirit is sweet above honey, and mine inheritance above honey and the honeycomb. My memory is unto everlasting generations. They that eat me shall yet hunger, and they that drink me shall yet thirst. He that hearkeneth to me shall not be confounded, and they that work by me shall not sin. They that explain me shall have life everlasting. And a reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. At that time, there stood by the cross of Jesus, his mother, and his mother's sister, Mary of Cleophas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus, therefore, had seen his mother and the disciples standing, whom he loved, he saith to his mother, Woman, behold thy son. After that, he saith to, to the disciple, Behold thy mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her to his own. And thus far the Gospel of the Lord. I would like to welcome all to our seventh annual May procession in, in Mass. Thank you for your coming. Give honor to our Blessed Mother in this special way. I would like to thank His Excellency Bishop Myron Cotta for being with us today as he was last year. He will be today's homilist. I would also like to thank His Excellency Bishop Jaime Soto for his support and his prayers. I would like to thank Reverend Father Michael O'Reilly, the Cathedral Director, for once again and his generosity allowing us to make use of the Cathedral. I would like to thank the Cathedral staff, which is always so very helpful in all the planning that is involved. I would thank in a special way the choir and the choristers of St. Stephen First Martyr, helping to make this Mass an especially beautiful one for the altar guild of St. Stephen's and from beyond, and so many others, most especially Mr. Michael Sultan, who is the one who coordinates all of the various activities and without whom this day would not be possible. Just a little instruction regarding receiving Holy Communion. At the traditional Mass, Holy Communion is received kneeling and on the tongue. Obviously, if it's impossible or difficult for you to kneel, you can remain standing. The priest will make the sign of the cross over you with the host. He says a little prayer. May the body of Christ bring your soul into everlasting life. And the priest himself says, Amen. You don't say anything. So you just open your mouth, put your tongue out a little ways, the priest places the host on it, and you return to your seat. Again, just for those who may not be so very familiar with the way in which communion is received at the traditional mass.
Peço-vos perdão para os não creem, não adoram, não esperam e não vos amam. Amém. Beginning with the wonderful celebration of Easter Triduum with Holy Thursday, I embraced this proclamation of my God I believe, I adore, I hope, and I love you. I ask pardon for those who do not believe, who do not adore, do not hope, and do not love you. That's how I began my homily on Holy Thursday. That's how I began my homily on the Liturgy of Good Friday. That's how I celebrated Easter Sunday. That we draw to the prayer of Fatima, that the angel of Portugal taught the three shepherd children, Jacinta, Francisco, and Lucia, a year before they ever appeared to them in the Cavalaria. The angel taught him this prayer, which drew, of course, attention to Jesus. Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament. Jesus in the Eucharist for us. As the angel appeared to them with the Blessed Sacrament suspended before them, they bowed their heads, their foreheads, to the ground, saying this prayer with all their heart, with all their being. And I challenge us to learn this short prayer as we continue in the season of Easter, the season of, season of resurrection, season of new life, and we move toward the great feast of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, Pentecost. You know, may this prayer, may this song, may this refrain echo throughout the whole year. It's a, a perfect prayer of centering for us. As we gather this morning on this first Saturday of the month of May, the month of Mary, the month in which we celebrate motherhood, we give praise and thanks for the gift of, of the mothers that God gave us and our families, all the work, love, dedication they have done, and those who have gone before us. May they rest in peace. We also look toward the 13th of this month, which is the anniversary of the first apparition of our Blessed Mother in the Cava de Aria, before the three shepherd children, and left a wonderful message of peace, reparation, prayers, as this refrain brings to our attention, we pray for those who do not believe, for those who do not hope and adore, and those who do not love. We pray and reach out to them in our prayers to our Blessed Mother, to Our Lady, who loves us all very much. I remember in an assignment that I had before I became Vicar General in the Diocese of Fresno, my last parish assignment was a wonderful parish named after Our Lady under a very unusual title, you don't hear it often, Our Lady of Miracles. And I remember the feast, it's, every, it's the second Sunday of September, and I would have the habit of bringing the school children over class by class, and as the feast approached, all the statues in the church were decorated on litters to be carried on the solemn procession on Sunday. Families for years had passed on this tradition that this one would decorate St. Joseph, this one would decorate Our Lady of the Lords, this one, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I would give the children a tour of those statues that were displayed at the back end of the church and say just a little bit about them. And then we process down the center aisle to where Our Lady was enthroned, the statue of Our Lady of Miracles, and would explain to them a little bit about the image of Our Lady. And the most important aspect of the image of Our Lady was that she had the Christ child in her arm, offering Jesus to us. As I explained this to, I think they were first graders maybe, <laughs> it was beautiful. 
One little boy raised his hand and said, Father, I go, yes. She must just love us to pieces. It was the most enduring, the most profound comment throughout the whole novena of Our Lady of Miracles, through the whole feast day of Our Lady of Miracles. That was the focal point for me that year. And praise be God. The individual who was in charge of all the festivities that year, the chairman of the festival, happened to be coming into the church to see me just at the moment that this little boy made this proclamation. After the children left the church, I told the president of the celebration, I said, what you just heard that little boy say, say encompasses what this festa, this celebration, celebration is all about, that Our Lady must just love us to pieces as she offers her son to us, as gift, as savior, as redeemer. In our first reading today, I think Our Lady, there's some words that just popped off the page for me that really connected with the role of Our Lady, uh, her person. I am the mother of the beauty of love, I am the mother of holy hope, as in this prayer of the angel, we place our hope in the God that she reveals to us. All grace of the way and of the truth is in me. She isn't the way, she isn't the grace, but she is encompassed, full of grace, that leads us to the way that is Jesus himself. He is the way, he is the truth. And we find that truth present in the mother of truth, in the mother who is the way, in the mother who is full of grace. It goes on in our first reading, all hope of life and virtue is in me. The sacredness of life that Our Lady holds out before us and before the world, all virtue that is so important in the life of the Christian, in the life of the Catholic. Then the scripture says, journey toward me. Just as in Fatima, as the children journeyed toward Our Lady approached her, because the first thing they did not want to approach her, and it was until she said, do not be afraid, that they were able to approach the little tree where she appeared and a peace came over them. Journey toward me, because I will lead you to Jesus. The scripture told us today, my memory is for generations of all ages. And in the Magnificat we hear that proclaim, all generations will call me blessed. Now and to the end of the world, Our Lady will be acknowledged, blessed among all women. One of the outstanding aspects of Our Lady is she was filled with courage and we see in the Gospel proclaimed today, she wasn't at a distance from the cross, she was at the foot of the cross. She was right next to her crucified son, filled with courage, filled with sorrow, filled with hope that this was not the end. And standing by the cross of Jesus, not only Mary, but the faithful disciple John. We are called also to be that faithful disciple at the foot of the cross, at the foot of the altar. Jesus with us. And we hear that wonderful gift that Jesus gave to John, and not only John, but all of us. Behold, woman, behold your son. And then turning to the faithful disciple, behold your mother. What does our Jesus do as he hangs on the cross for us? He empties himself to the point that he lets go and gives to us the last thing he's hanging on to for comfort, for peace, for strength, his mother. 
and he empties himself and gives her to you and to me. Gives her to those who do not even know her, inviting them to be sons and daughters, brothers and sisters, and allowing her to care for us, to lead us again to the way that is her son. A beautiful thing in that gospel says, from that hour, the disciple, John, took her into his home. I believe today's celebration, honoring our Blessed Mother, is that we invite others to open their doors of their heart and welcome them into their home, their heart. Allow her immaculate heart to touch our hearts and to allow our Lady, lady to reside, spiritually speaking, in the domestic church, your homes, among you, your families, you as parents, you as spouses, you as brothers and sisters, parents, welcome Our Lady under your roof to allow her to lead you to Jesus who is the way. In closing, I came to this little quote just recently actually in referring to our Blessed Mother uh, at the foot of the cross and also taking in mind uh, the Easter season. With a blend of suffering, joy, and holy anxiety, Our Lady burned with desire for her Son to resurrect. That's a beautiful quote. Our Lady burned with desire for her Son to rise from the dead. Waiting in vigil, filled with hope, adoring, believing, loving, as that prayer of the angel brings to our attention in this month of May, the month of Our Lady, the month of Our Lady of Fatima, the Immaculate Heart, the prayer of the angel is a creed that Our Lady lived with all her mind, heart, strength, soul, her whole person. I believe, I adore, I hope, and I believe. And I turn to those who do not believe, who do not adore, who do not hope, and do not love you. I intercede on their behalf as their mother. As I stand at the foot of this cross, and as I stand in the entrance of the empty tomb. That's our mother. That's the gift Jesus gave us at the foot of the cross. This woman filled with love and hope, adoring, never tiring of all those virtues. May the, Our Lady bless us as we begin this month of her honor, in her honor, this month of May, as we move to work toward Mother's Day itself, and give praise and thanks to God the Father for the gift of Our Lady, and the gift that Jesus gave us at the foot of the cross, and also as we approach the feast of May 13th, the feast of Our Lady's visit to the Kavla Veria.
Thank you. 